So as it turns out, I am a huge fan of the house of Bulgari. I own many of their fragrances, Bulgari Man, Terry Essence, Wood Neroli, Tiger, Garanat, so many amazing fragrances from both the high-end line and also the signature line. Here, we're actually dealing with a women's fragrance. This is gonna be a first impression. Today is gonna be my first time trying this one. This one is called Splendida Magnolia Sensuelle. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this women's perfume, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my first impressions on Magnolia Sensuel, which is a uh, Splendida flanker by Bulgari, and I tell you all about it, what I get in terms of the smell, and what my impressions are initially, I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon, and of course, give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, I actually do have a lot of Bulgari fragrances. I bought uh, several Omnia bottles. My mother actually loves many of them. I forget specifically which one she has. And then of course, I have a lot of the higher end fragrances from the La Gem collection. They can be a little pricey. The perfumer is Jacques Cavalle. He created those fragrances, meaning the Tiger and the Garanat, if I'm not mistaken. And he's also composed this fragrance here. Now, I don't actually own Splendida. I don't have any of the flankers, if you will. And this one is called Magnolia Sensuelle, which means sensual magnolia. So of course, that's one of the notes in here, but there are a few other notes in here like jasmine and orange blossom, musk, Tahitian vanilla. So it's a pretty complex note breakdown, but it seems like it's dominated by floral ingredients. So let's jump on into it. Let's check it out. Let's see what this one is all about. So I'm going to be spraying it for the first time here. Don't quite know what to expect. Oh yeah, very floral. <laughs> I thought the orange was gonna be a little bit brighter in the opening. It's not overly orangey. And I suppose the reason I'm saying that is because I am getting a lot of that jasmine magnolia, sort of almost gardenia-like thing that's happening in the heart. So I am getting a little bit of citrus. It's definitely bright and citrusy and flavorful in the opening, but it's not overly citrusy. And I'm definitely not getting too much orange. I'm getting more blossom, less orange, if that makes sense. Now, in terms of the magnolia, it's definitely in there. It kind of gives off like this bright, natural waxy characteristic, uh, which I've actually encountered in a few other fragrances. And I actually do enjoy the note of Magnolia. I'm not a huge fan of floral ingredients. I'm not a big fan of Freesia or Narcissus. Um, Ylang Ylang, I can kind of tolerate from time to time. I love Iris and Rose and Orange Blossom. And I'm also learning recently that Magnolia is another one of those ingredients that I really enjoy. Tuberose, give or take, but this one smells awesome. I love it, very classy, very executive, very professional. And for that reason, I would say that I can certainly see this one working really well in a formal scenario. So if you're looking for something that is dressed up, very classy, refined, elegant, professional, perhaps even something to wear to a job interview, or even long after you've gotten the job, I think this is perfect for that. Just because it does give across this aura and element of professionalism, which you're probably not going to get from some other citrus heavy fragrances. I know a lot of Dolce & Gabbana summer flankers come to mind. Versace Dylan Turquoise for women. It's an eau de toilette that comes to mind as one of the casual fragrances. But this one actually gives off more of a formal vibe, which I really, really appreciate. So I get a lot of that sort of jasmine magnolia combination. And I think the jasmine also lends an air of tranquility to the fragrance, which is something that I don't think would have been entirely established by the orange blossom and perhaps the magnolia, but jasmine sort of has that effect. It's very calming, very grounding. Some might even say meditative. And that along with the clean musk that you're gonna get in the base, is really wonderfully done. Now, it does come across sensual. So not only is it professional and executive and like a CEO, it also comes across rather sensual, not overly flirty. I think had there been something fruity in here or something sugary in here, I know the vanilla is in here, but if there were something sugary, maybe some ethyl maltol, then I would have said, okay, it does smell a little youthful and flirtatious and perhaps a little playful. But I think this is still kind of veering on the professional and classy side of things. Now, now, in terms of that Tahitian vanilla that's in the base, I smell it, but it's like so quiet. 
And so, you know, there are many, many other fragrances. Believe you me, you are not gonna experience a shortage of vanilla-based perfumes, especially on the women's side of things. Very popular ingredient, or ethyl vanillin, I should say, is very popular. In the case of this fragrance, while I am picking up on a tiny, tiny amount of sweetness, I think it's only 15% and the florals are like 80% and the citrus is like another 5%. And so that's kind of the balance or the ratio, if you will, that I'm experiencing from this one. So here's the thing, my wife, actually really enjoys floral perfumes. She enjoys her ylang ylang, especially when it veers on like the tropical coconut side of things. She loves freesia as well, and even Narcissus to a certain extent. And so something like this, I think there is a, a higher chance of her enjoying this one. And so I'll probably have her try it, even though I purchase fragrances all the time that I think she's gonna love, she ends up hating them. So I'm gonna have to spend a little bit more time with her just to see if, uh, you know, she actually enjoys this one. I'll have her smell it this evening, but I like it. I would love to smell this one on my wife. And this is kind of like the type of aroma that I would love to smell when I just want something that smells very sort of tranquil and meditative. But if you're putting it on your skin and allowing it to react with your skin's chem uh, chemistry, I would surmise that this is going to evoke that very sort of high-end, professional, luxurious kind of a vibe. And so, I'm a fan, <laughs> Bulgari Splendida Magnolia Sensuel. I think it's a great fragrance. I personally really, really enjoy it. I'm four years late, but better late than never. I hope you enjoyed my first impressions. I hope you took something of value. I'm so sorry that I can't really touch upon longevity and projection. I would get the impression that the longevity and projection is going to be loud, uh, moderately loud, not overly loud. This one is a Eau de Parfum, and so you can expect it to last in the vein of six to eight hours. I would say because it doesn't seem too base heavy, not a lot of woods and resins and smokes and incense and balsams. I would say you're probably gonna get closer to six hours than eight hours, just a speculation. If you've tried this one, if you can corroborate everything that I'm saying, leave a comment down below. And I would imagine that the projection for this one is also going to be on the moderate side of things because the citrus in the opening is not overwhelming. It seems like the composition fast forwarded to that floral heart. And so I would say it would radiate beyond an arm's length for like half an hour. So that would be my speculation. Again, no more speculating. Thank you for watching. Love you all. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, hit the bell, give me a thumbs up. We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.